Thank you very much. But I think it is time to get back to the dancing very promptly. So I'm going to hit you now with a song I like to call Nabokov's Wandering Eye. Welcome to the Two Month Review, the weekly podcast brought to you by Open Letter and 3%, in which we take one giant book, Ada or Arda in this case, break it down bit by bit, section by section, read it, talk about it, discuss it, analyze it, have fun. I'm Chad Post from Open Letter Books, joined as always by Brian Wood. Hi, Chad. Uh, good to be here. Did you get shot this week at all? I did not get shot yet this week. Hey, that's a good week, man. Way to go. But all the protesters got thrown out of occupying City Hall while I was in class, so I'm not sure what's actually no, but, in, but, but, but in a perfect universe, Chad, after that shot, you should have developed like superpowers and become some sort of Marvel Comics danger, you know? Exactly. Yeah? exactly. Like the danger. It's still coming. It's publisher, still coming. The publisher. <laughs> <laughs> I walk around with like a big dictionary and a manual of style. And, like, yeah. People yeah. With black pepper balls. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm, here to put order. I, I'm here to put order in, in on, on the libraries of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> and you can sort of love of eugenetic Thanos, but with books. And your catchphrase has to do something to about away. half the, the books have to go away <laughs> from now on. <laughs> your final line before you end somebody is something about the Oxford comma. It should be that or stat. <laughs> it's just stat. Yeah. You've yeah. been <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're laughing too much. Let's get a little bit serious. I think we, yeah, we were well, like, our, oh, who, please, my God. Who on earth could be our guest today, Chad? <laughs> Rodrigo Frazan, the Hello. most famous non-reader of Ada or Arter, yep. that I'm aware yep. of. Well, but, 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 but a special kind of non-reader because I'm trying to read it all the time. <laughs> In fact, you know, well, you know, once I, I, John Irving told me, he, John Irving's favorite author is Charles Dickens, and he told me that he read all of Dickens except one novel. Uh, he, he didn't mention the title, and he told me that he's saving that novel for the day the doctor says, I have very bad news for you. You have like two months mm -hmm. to live. So he's saving that for that. So maybe I'm doing that with, with Ada, you know. How, how is it? Is Ada or Ada for you? Ada. Uh, we we tried to figure this out last week, and I still don't know. I think it's Ada or Ada. You know, uh, it's, it's, that, that's Ada. That, that's Ada. 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 But we're going to call it Ada because we're American. I, <laughs> Ada, I can't say Ada right, generally. It, like, it gets stuck. But yeah. adding Ada on there doesn't help. <laughs> it has like a setting up of like a, a sound. Yeah. I can't both of those words to go right. Also, no, we have not put on the long list. No, but, but I was hot, hot take reactions that that didn't happen again. But alas, and no, I'm but, gonna... but, but, but as I was telling you, you know, I try to read it all the time. I try to read it again during the pandemic. I said it's now or never, but I always stop at around page 122. And the thing I always do is when, when, I, when I'm on going to, to take a plane or, or going to be on a long trip, I always take the book again with me in order to try to read it on that trip finally. But I always buy a new one. So I have like 35 copies of Ada. I think I have like 25 in English. I have, I, I brought some of them in order to show you. Oh my God, I love yeah. it. Get ready. Well, this, this, this is the, the Library of America volume mm -hmm. that contains it. It's yep. a, with transparent things and look at the Harlequins. Nice. And I was thinking no, about that. Nabokov considered himself, you know, an, an, an American writer on his, his own words, an American writer born in Russia. And I think that he's the only one with singer that is a foreigner in, on, on Library of America. I think it's, they are the only two authors. Hmm. And oh, that's interesting. Yeah. No? Yeah, I think it's the only one because and 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 uh, I think he wrote. In fact, I, I always say this. You know, when when the the theme of you know the great American novel, which one is? I always say, I'm sorry, but it was written by a Russian in the midst of the Cold War. It's Lolita, and it, there's not more American book, great American novel, written by a foreigner who re revolutionized 
the the, the language, you know, you can ask more than that. Yeah, you know, yeah. to represent America. I, I feel like when I was looking for images for this post last week for the first episode, that the one that came up was a Time magazine that had the title like America's greatest living novelist is yeah. Russian. When 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 other when other came out that it says uh, the novel is alive and well in anti terra. That's oh. that's the caption there. Oh cool. And and it's okay. uh, that, and that's funny because when the novel came out, when other came out, it was celebrated as a masterpiece. It was, uh, I think it was number four. I, I, I took some notes and, and I think it's, it was number four on the bestseller list. It was Godfather in number one, The Love Machine by Jacqueline Susan, number two. Court Noise Complaint, number three, and Other Ardor, number four. And like two months uh, after the book came out, people started to say, it's not, it's not so good, really. <clears throat> For example, Mary McCarthy, who, who who wrote like a glowing review for for Pale Fire, which for me is like the most uh, avant-garde, uh, transgressive, uh, experimental, best book ever, you know. And she said the book uh, Ada is really so bad that it makes me reconsider all the books he wrote before. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. And now come sort of he, he was if if you if you if you listen or well, if, if you read to his correspondence at the time he was waiting for it and he he always refers to to the book as my fat book or or Nabokov's folly he says folly yeah. and uh, and uh, and I think that I don't know why I always stop reading I don't know why that was gonna be my but, question yeah but I think that it's the only place where Nabokov uh, tries to measure himself against his heroes in a very evident way. He wants to be like, he, he's like comparing him, himself to Tolstoy, to Anna Karenina, which wow, for him was the best 19th mm -hmm. century novel. He, oh, yeah. he, tries to be, he, he tries to be Proust. Yeah. And last but not least, he tries to be Nabokov. Yeah. 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 Which is like you know he's all the time like self-referencing and making very bad funny jokes mm -hmm. about about him and himself. You no, know? so he's like saying like some sort of he's like uh, like I don't know like posing for his statue and at the same time like dismantling all the Nabokovian myth. You know that there's like some sort of two two forces that work there. I think that that's that's my theory. And, and and also there there's you know a lot of uh, he he from the technical point of view I mean he tries to do it, everything because he, if if you if you pay attention to the book the book is told from the it's, it, it's it's like an old manuscript being commented and annotated from yep. the future during the present when you are reading it, it it's like whole complex of spheres in in a sort of united states completely jj abrams sort of thing in a way yeah. you know, it's, it's like but well done and and, and you understand it you no know? yeah, yeah I was really, curious. sorry oh go ahead chad no you go i was curious um last week we were talking about um what it's like to read his work Maybe not necessarily this book, but other works. And you had mentioned mm -hmm. it briefly about Lolita and um, Hell Fire. Like for you, as a as a writer and obviously a voracious reader, first, um, what what is like the experience of reading Nabokov like for you? Well, you have to be first of all pretty careful because he's a very toxic writer. He's he's like COVID, you know. Mm -hmm. You you can be really. It happens with Proust also. You know, it, it's like a pretty. A contagious, invasive sort of of writer in the good sense, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 he's like, I, I think that the, the the most interesting thing and the most joyful thing for me of reading Nabokov is like the constant happiness. That there's happiness all. You've never seen a happier man in the world. Maybe Cortázar. It's it's like him in terms of I'm having so much fun while I'm writing it, you know? And and what makes it for me even more valuable is the idea that he had a, like 
a pretty complicated life, you know. He, he has he had all the reasons to to be tragic, to play the 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 card of you know the refugee, the political, uh, probably won a Nobel Prize if if yeah. he he I mean he could have done that and he would have been, but he was perfectly happy, mm. and 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 nothing provokes more uh, untrust. To academy that a happy writer, I think. <laughs> yeah. oh, true. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. If you don't have that tragic air, you're not you're not supposed to be happy when you write. No, definitely not. And this is like I've really enjoyed this so far. Like I find it. I know what you're saying about it. Like sort of like the nods to Tolstoy and Proust and himself and yep. the way that it's sort of like that's kind of baked into it. But I don't mm -hmm. mind that right now. Like I I, I mean maybe because I've read a bunch of the books in a row. Um, like Penin just a few weeks ago, that I'm well, sort of in Penin is amazing. Oh, so good, so good. I mean, all all of them are a lot of them are really good. I'm not as big of a fan of like um, invitation to a beheading, like ones that are like more political. Even Ben Sinister, I liked, but not as much. I like these these ones and those really early ones, like Laughter in the Dark, that are like really emotional yeah. at the same time and have that core. But like this book in particular, like I've just really enjoyed like the the writing level of it and like. I don't know. There's a part. So my, I have a controversial statement about it, but I have a question for you with the games that maybe one of you two is much smarter than I am because some of the games are super fun and I get it. And sometimes I don't like all the references to Lolita. I find hysterical as if he's toying with us. And that ties into my grand comment in a minute, but there's one on page 77, which, so we're you, up to you're, you're using this one, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Do you want me to do, do you want me to show you first all my <laughs> editions of Lolita? Yeah, I have this one. I have a first edition, which is uh, it's it's fun because in the cover says only Ada. I think I that they, they they leave out the the or art or part because they want to relate it to Lolita, you know, in in commercial terms. I think yep. so. I have this is this is the face the the first paperback. Wow. Which is very funny because, well, it has blurbs, of course. There's the New York Times, Look Magazine, Newsweek, Anthony Burgess, Gene Stafford. And this is the most fun part. There's a blurb by Bambin. Oh, my God. And Wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I have this one. This is, this is the old vintage one. I have that one. This is a penguin. with It's Ada or Ardor with no comma. Which is interesting. Yeah, they don't believe in commas in Britain, anyways. No. This is oh oh too hot. That's not safe for work. No, nope. <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I'm, 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 I'm everyone. Block it, block it now. No, no, and, and and I even read. I haven't read it, Ada, but I, I have this that it's a whole book by Brian Boyd by Nabokov's bio, biographer on Ada. Do you? Are you this? That's awesome. I feel like I should have that for this podcast. Yeah. And to finish and to finish this part of our night, I'm going to show you the two absolute I, I'm not I'm not watching you. Where are you? Did you, you disappear? I, I made it you so that we can just see the bugs. Are you there? Yeah, we're we're here. Ah, okay, sorry. Okay. I made it so and uh, and I'm going to show you the the absolute two jewels of my crown. One is this one, which is conclusive evidence, which is the, the first version of speak memory. Yeah. Oh, wow. And this, get ready for this. Oh my gosh, two of wow. them. It's, this is the first edition, the French edition of, you know, in Girodias. Yeah, yeah. In two volumes. Oh my God. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, that is super cool. There is, you've got a great collection of all. And all of this is, and, and all this is going to disappear like tears in the rain when I when I die. <laughs> I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be sold by the weight, you know. Hopefully, in a pair of bike shorts. All no, of no, 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 it's going to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> tears in the rain. <laughs> in the rain, a little uh, Blade Runner action. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, well, here's my quite. I want this. There's a lot to talk about here, but this is the first thing that I really wanted to ask you guys because I couldn't figure it out, and I think I'm just missing something really obvious and stupid. 
But um, there's a note from page 77. On 77, it says, 70, page 77 has, at the very beginning, the child is permitted to wear her Lolita, thus dubbed after the little Andalusian gypsy of that name in Osberg's novel, and pronounced, incidentally, with the Spanish T, not a thick English one. And the note in the back says, Osberg, another good-natured anagram, scrambling the name of a writer who, with whom the author... Borges. 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 Ah! <laughs> Come on, no, but, but, no, but but no, but we 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 in Argentina we talk about this line all the time. I mean, it's 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 like a national theme of conversation. Oh, really? I had to like write it down and figure it out. I no, it's working it right away. Okay. <laughs> I looked at it for like two minutes. I was like, I have no idea. Like, no, it's not... I, yeah, because you know what? I think it was in in. in there, there was a year when the finalists for the Nobel Prize were like Borges, Graham Greene, and Nabokov, and none of them got them. The, the one who got them was like some Swedish called Ingrams Bornregen Sum Sum Premden Den Baklongen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was a year. I don't know what you're talking about there, though, because uh, prize committees are infallible. <laughs> Sorry? Prize committees, especially the Nobel, infallible. 100% right. Oh, you, know, the, 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 you, you know, you have to think think about this. Nabokov never get any of the big prizes. Never. Not one of them. Not the Nobel, not the National Book Award, not the Circles Critic Books Award. None of them. Sure. Never. Oprah's Book Club? Can you let's get an Oprah's no. Book Club? No? No, 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 no. Could you imagine if Oprah's oh. Book Club did like Lolita? <laughs> <laughs> <That'd be wild. laughs> no, I, 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 I would for that i would buy tv to yeah. buy that, that yeah. would be so to frame this one too so this section so the last section we did last week kind of went through like the overture of like the grand theme setting everything up more or less in a confusing post potentially confusing way this section was the 60 pages was so much slower and so much easier to like digest in a sense in a way because it's just like a love story like to me it was like more of the bucolic tolstoy love and like Russian novel thing. Mm -hmm. The one problem being that the two people are falling in love and fucking are brother and half brother and sister. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was totally normal back then. <laughs> and, and, you know, Nabokov used to say beauty is in the details. <laughs> but that's the detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. But I thought it was interesting. It's like a whole thing, like almost like this game of where he's the writing in this section is so it is so polished of like a, a in a more like romantic sense. And the, and the, as you said, it's set up to where Van's written it and they're revising it. And Ada and Van are talking about it in 90 years later or whatever, 70 years later. Yeah. In the yeah. 60s. Um, so it is written. The 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 narrator is really unreliable. And not only is it reliable, but he's the character and the commentator. So it's got like a lot of puzzles there. But it seems like in this section to me, it was struck me as being much more like romantic and like like trying to write that sort of book, like a big, you know, sweeping Russian novel. But by keep bringing up Lolita, by referencing like Lolita a bunch of times, by having the section with the the painter who would like only paint women girls from behind, and that he would always lift her up and like basically sexually harass her in various yeah. ways. Like all of that is set up almost as foils to the fact that like, all, as if he's playing a game of like, forget for a minute that they're half brother and sister and just watch this. And then you're gonna feel uncomfortable because you're there, you know that readers are already like uncomfortable because of Lolita. And so going into this, any of that's like kind of triggering. And so I think it's an interesting game for him to play as a writer where you take something that's like, everyone's gonna condemn automatically. Incest is bad. And then like yeah. for 122 pages, puts you into that in a way that's like childlike and like sort of wondrous. Like the description of when she gets him off the first time when the barn's burning is like not, none of the language is specific. It's all, it's all um, metaphor. Yeah. So yeah. Like the, the I, think, but I, think, I think again, I think again, you know, that sort of the thing that for me is much more astonishing is He's not trying to to be scandalous at all. He, he's saying they're perfectly happy men, so that's the whole point. Yeah, it's and it's not even you know the the criminal kidnapping perverse 
yeah. all European raping young American girl in that that it takes place in Lolita. This is like complete consentment. I mean, we 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 are perfect for each other, and we are going to fight for it. You know, but mm -hmm. you know, there, there's one thing. I hope I'm not going to spoil anything for you because we'll, you'll keep on reading, and I'm not going to keep on reading. You know. <laughs> <laughs> this is all we get. You know, I, I, you know at, at the at the end of this episode, I I'll be you know like at, at the train station waving you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Right, right back. Tell me how it ends. <laughs> Tell me how it ends. <laughs> no, but but I mean in in the in the book of letters by Nabokov, there's one. And this is really really it's, it's a very short letter to a reviewer of the book. It's, it's mm -hmm. a very fun letter, but it's very strange. Well, very revealing what, what he says about, he says, he writes to a, a professor, Matthew Hodgard. Uh, he, he, he was at the, at the Department of English in Cornell University and his review of that appeared in the New York Review of Books. Ah, and he says, listen to this because it's very funny, sir. I do not really mind your introducing ridiculous errors such as at grace instead of at gaze or the reference to Gardner. Look up the passage in his book and index all through your review of Ada. But I do ob object violently to your, to, to your scene in the United Ben and Ada. But this is the interesting part. Both rather horrible creatures. A picture of my married life. What the hell, sir, do you know about my married life? I expect a prompt apology from you. But the interesting thing is that he considered Ada and, and Ben two rather horrible creatures. I mean, it's, it's not like some sort of love in the time of cholera sort of thing that love that, you know, goes through the ages and survives everything. He's he's saying they're they're not good, right? In, 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 so, so it's sort of strange in a way. That's because why sometimes I, you're thinking he's celebrating them. Yeah, I'd always thought like I feel like I'd read somewhere heard that Van Veen is one of his like big horrible people, horrible horrible characters, um, and yeah. that's why in a way this section reminded me. It's, it's what makes this complicated in a way to talk about like. In this time and in the climate, there's so many things about like what you should and shouldn't depict in fiction and what's allowed and what not allowed and so on and so forth. And like this falls into that category. And at the same time, it feels like um, a bit of the Anna Karenina game where it's like you're being duped on some level. Like and, and that it's like Vronsky is great. You know, Karenina is Karenina's such a dick. And then like you kind of know like ah, it's probably like painting this to set me up. And then when it starts to reverse, you get like the fuller character thing. So I had that feeling in this that like, especially because the, it, this section becomes totally clear that Ben wrote this and that they are looking at it much later, that it is yeah. so unreliable that it is like making this out into being this romantic, beautiful, yeah. kind thing. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. It's in that still, right. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and the fact that she's 12 is a, another part that makes it it's one thing to be like, oh, well, they're cousins who end up finding out that they're half brother and sister, but, you know, they're cousins and like, I don't know, I can squint and like be okay with it because they're both like 18 and consenting, but he's 14 and she's 12. And then that, that all of these things within our climate now are like, I can't imagine this book's reaction if it came out in 2020. I think that the, the, the most worrisome sad thing that is probably it, it won't came out but for for many other reasons than than that one you know no. it's like they're going to say i mean who, who's the target of this book i mean who's going to read it yeah at that level yeah there'd be a lot of criticisms but are you curious it's yeah one thing I did yeah, like yeah. in this section was the attention to detail with um, like flowers and trees. And it, it almost sets up this picturesque garden, like idyllic garden landscape. And then you insert this devil into Eden. Yeah. 
right? There's some of that, yeah, that's true. But what mm -hmm. that? But it's amazing that that, that that's the, the amazing thing of, of Navico for me, you know, like, well, you know, it, it really, people tend to doubt that sort of thing. He, he repeated all the time that he saw letters as colors, you know, that he had this some sort of, I don't know, I don't remember how it's, it's called that song. Uh, mental, yeah. Something like yeah. that. But it, it, it's all over the place, I think. He's, he's writing with colors, all, all the, like painting. It's, it's like painting, writing in a way, you know? Yeah. I just say one other thing that's impressive is like his vocabulary and, and it writing in a time when you couldn't just like Google what are crazy words about like geology um, to know like these things are like so, so impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another thing that is very interesting is, is that, that in some very strange way, it's a science fiction book, you know? Mm -hmm. And he hated science fiction. Nabokovic, he was like a big, like, big fan of, of uh, communication with the, the great beyond. In, in all his books are like sort of currents and, and ghosts. But mm -hmm. he didn't like science fiction at all. He, he, which is strange because once, once he, he almost collaborated with Hitchcock in a project and, and what he proposed was the movie about uh, a Hollywood star, an actress who, who gets married to an astronaut and the astronaut goes into space and when he comes back, it's different. Oh, Which I saw that with Johnny Depp, that one movie. Yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, nobody, but, but it's very yeah. Hitchcockian sort of thing. You know, it's like yeah. Cary Grant, Joseph Cotton in those movies, like, you know, yeah. They, they, they're not what they're, well, Norman Bates, you know, they're not supposed what, what they're supposed to be, you know? I was looking at the dates on, Sorry. on Ada and wondering if, if he ever read any Philip K. Dick in the 60s or not. Well, that, that I don't think so. I, 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 I doubt he would, but. Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're just, regardless of science fiction, in, in one of the last short stories, there's one of the last ones, it's, it's science fiction short story that it's, title Lance, and he says, it's very fi funny, he says, finally, I utterly spurn and reject so-called science fiction. I have looked into it and found it as boring as a mystery story magazines. The same sort of dismally pedestrian writing with oodles of dialogue and loads of communicational humor. The cliches are, of course, these guys. Essentially, they are the same through and throughout all cheap reading matter whether it spans the universe or the living room. They are like those assorted cookies, cookies that differ from one another only in shape and shade, whereby the, their shrewd makers ensnared the salivating consumer in a mad Pavlovian world where at no extra cost, variations in simple visual values influence and gradually replace flavor which thus goes the way of talent and truth, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty strong. There is an essay that one of our listeners sent to me that I printed out and I haven't read yet because I kind of think I might need to wait till we finish the book, but it's Ada science fiction. It's like a, a critical essay on reading it as a science fiction. Yeah, but, but I think that more, more than science fiction, it's like some sort of the, the continuing adventures of Alice in Wonderland also. Yeah. If, well, in fact, Navokov translated Alice in Wonderland into Russian is one of his translations. Oh, huh. yeah, yeah, I remember that. And I think isn't there was it in this section that there's a reference to Alice in Wonderland, or maybe it was in the last one, but it's like one of the inverted titles where it's like Palace yeah. and yeah, whatever. Yeah, I can't remember that was now, but yeah, it's funny when I was reading this this section, I kind of got the feeling of when I watched um, Barry Lyndon for the first time by Kubrick, really like slow and it's like, it's almost like he'll take a genre that you think you know and do his own thing with it and make you sit with it in a way. Yeah. Um, and you know, in the way when you think of like 2001, right? How, what a different science fiction film that was compared to everything else. And yeah. how like slow and like, this isn't science fiction. It's like, absolutely this is, I'll show you what science fiction actually is. And, well, the, the, when, when, when I think it, when, when it was like uh, 68, two years ago, when, when it was like the, the 50th anniversary of, of 2001, there was a book that came out. 
and they told about the making of the movie and they, they told, you know, like the raging discussions and arguments between Kubrick and, and Arthur, Arthur C. Clarke about showing the aliens or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Clark was all for it. He wanted to show them, and Kubrick says no. And the, what the, that was like a point of, you know, like, and that's the revolutionary part of 2001. You don't see anything because, I mean, if you, if they, they, I think that Kubrick understood the idea that if we saw aliens, we won't be able to understand them. Yeah, um, that's like a Stanislaw Lem sort of idea too. They, they don't have to be like human, you know, or have humanoid, you know characteristics that they, they can be like gas mm -hmm. or color or whatever you know yep and, and but i feel like the same way too with when you read the lita and it's an american travel novel right yeah like it's a real that, novel yeah in that classic tradition and it's like novikov goes no 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 no. let me i'll, I'll do my i'll do my american road novel here you go yeah but, but yeah but he, he 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 puts himself into a very strong tradition, but he did, he discovers motels. Yeah. There were no motels in fiction up until Lolita. So it's like, weird. It's like the, the, the great motel novel, road <laughs> motel novel. No. Yeah. <laughs> I saw something on the New Yorker page turner. I didn't read that article, but it was about uh, the death of landlines in fiction, which is something I've always been sort of interested with with movies. It's like, you can't set movies in it's hard to write a movie set now in the way that it was easier when it's like after 9-11 uh, but before the iphone is like a sweet spot where like characters have to interact in certain ways that are cinematic rather than just like texting each other that is more realistic yeah. like there wasn't that element yet um and it wasn't like that that way of getting all the information immediately and everything there's still like a way of of the communication flows that is much more like normal human in that sense it works better for film and for books i think that might be something eventually too in no, a modern but, the, 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 but the fun thing is now you see a, a movie that was that is shot a year ago with two people kissing on the street and it's a, it's an historical <laughs> movie wow <laughs> what are you doing i missed that wow lines yeah. that's cool no no <laughs> i mean it's it's it's, it's, it's it, it happens to me you know when when you see a even an 80s movie, you know, when someone starts running looking for a telephone. Yeah. <laughs> it has to make a phone call and he yeah. runs, you know, and it doesn't work. And, and he asks, you know, enters in a, in, in, a, in a shop and says, can I use your phone, you know? And the people says no or yes. <laughs> no, it's strange. <laughs> I, have, I have another question that's probably dumb. Um, that Maybe not as dumb as Borges, but on page 81, where it talks about the magic carpets or jickers that were given to a boy on his 12th birthday in the adventurous days before the great reaction. Um, as if, they, and I think there's mentioned one other time, these magic carpets, is this a world in which magic carpets exist? <laughs> or is this like something that? That, Oh, yeah. Very bottom. Oh, yeah. Those delightful gliders called magic carpets or jickers? that were given a boy on his 12th birthday in the adventurous days before the great reaction, which is both is capitalized as if it's like an event that maybe happened within this world. But yes, yeah, so I, I, this, that's one of the moments I marked in here of like, I still don't know where we really are or like what the rules you know, of. The, 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 there, there are hints all the time that, that like, it was like some sort of big crack in space time and think and, and sort the map sort of move you know it's like yeah it's it's, it's... yeah it's really it's like, it's like a multiverse or something but i think it's, it's that's a, that's a reflex of of something that he announces pretty clearly in in in, in speak memory which is one of the, the greatest books he he ever wrote he's all the time like trying to go back to russia and i think that in in these pages he's sort of reconstructing you know some idea they, they, they always ask him why, why don't you go back and he he always answered in his interviews because the, the russia i knew it doesn't exist anymore and, and i don't want to superimpose the new one into my immortal invulnerable and eternal one you know he didn't right. want to make comparisons and i think all the time he's doing this in here you know 
Yeah, that's true. That makes and sense. He, in fact, he, he, he does not go to Russia, but he brings Russia into America. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a Russian America, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's like an invasion in a way, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Fun. Because this is going to be interesting. I know you're going to leave us and not continue reading, but I'm very curious to see how all this like <laughs> unfolds over the next 500 pages or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I, well, I, I read. I, I I made some cheat. Some I, I cheat some because I read. There's a, there's a section near the end that it's titled "The Texture of Time." That is the book that Ben writes on time. Uh, you know, based on 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 Nabokov's obsession with the ideas of Dan. You know, this philosopher strange philosopher who was also like a uh, uh, airplane pilot and, and a ex expert fisherman. It's, it's a very strange character. And Borges was also a fan of him, you know? Mm -hmm. he, he, he wrote like a very Proustian book on, on, on time and Nabokov uses it, you know? And I read that because in, in, in the remembered part, the, 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 the character of the book finally reads Ada. He manages to do it in a very peculiar, very strange, and non-orthodox way. I'm not going to say anything more, you know. <laughs> but he finally, he finally makes it, and and I needed to read that that part. And I read that Brian Boyd, Brian Boyd book, then where he sort of explains a bit about the the whole thing. That's interesting. What a shameless plug! My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> You couldn't yeah. help yourself yeah. to our thousands and thousands of audience members. <laughs> yeah. Pre-order the, the remembered part. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Pre-order it now, even though it's not available for pre-order. Just do it. <laughs> Get ready. No, I, th I think that we'll almost finished it. I'm no ghostly flabbergasted. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I talked to him a couple weeks ago, but he didn't mention that. Yeah. Well, if you're watching this or listening and you're holding out on me, he was he 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 was going to watch. He told me. I don't know if it's you know why. We're gonna have words if you're holding holding back a Rodrigo book from from reading. He's going to I, he's going he's going to burn the manuscript when he yeah. finishes. He's going to destroy it. Right? Imagine the yeah. uh, the burning part. Oh, the burning. <laughs> yeah. That's what we can have as a launch party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What a, the another part that I really like in here that I thought was super funny. Will says he's close. He just chimed in on the chat and said he's close to being done. So he's okay. getting there. Close, this close, is close, close is a very ambiguous word. <laughs> you know, it's like like interesting. He's very interesting. What do you think? Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, sympathetic. She's very sympathetic. <laughs> Yeah, and she, and, and, and she ends up being Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Another incorrect movie. There are lots mm -hmm. of things that can be shown today or can be commented on today. One of my favorite descriptors that you can never use is uh, in this one, that she was a jolly, handsome woman. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, what do you think? Exactly. Uh, oh, she was a handsome woman. Yeah, no. <laughs> What I, I meant it, I meant it nice. What the heck? <laughs> then it, it sounds then you, you have to think about. I mean, she's a handsome woman with in the voice of James Stewart, and it sounds perfect. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, <I> don't know. <laughs> yeah. sort of related to that. I love their uh, and for you guys as writers, I love the um, the critique that they have of what's her name, the the, the novelist writes that short story about the. Still borrowing the necklace and losing it and paying half a million francs and earning back and then yeah, the, that, what's that book? I when I read that part, I I, I managed to track it. Did you uh -huh. know which book is that? I figured it was it sounded familiar, but I couldn't I thought maybe it was just a fairy tale I'd heard before. And then No, I think it's something I, I don't know if it's Balzac or something like that. Mm. Or or uh, it just reminds me of like all the O. Henry twists. Yeah. It's a short story by Mopasan or something like that. Oh, that that would make sense too. I think so. probably or something. The um that totally makes sense. But I love that their their comments um when they ask about it. Did you and she's like, neither of you told me how you like my new story. It's a very it's a good fairy tale, said Ben. 
It's a fairy tale, said careful Ada. Fucking <laughs> 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 sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a book. <laughs> now that's a book. <laughs> that really does have all the qualities of book. No, he's amazing in that sense. I mean, he's he's like no no. I mean, he 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 gives. I mean, he doesn't save anything for him. You know, it's like, and in this book, I think he was like, this is my you know, everything every, everything goes. You know, in a way, because it's very it's very 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 interesting. The idea that after these books, he he writes transparent things that is a very slim book with a young girl again, but uh, with a publisher as yeah. hero, which is very strange. There aren't, there aren't a lot of pub publishers or editors as protagonists. So. Yeah, that's why my, that's my, super, my superhero character will really be a successful yeah. one. And I think uh, in, 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 in the it. last novel of James Salter, last one, before he died, the the, the, main, the hero is the protagonist is the publisher also. Mm. But there aren't there aren't many publishers as protagonists, you know. No. Sorry, Dad. Right. Oh no, yeah, yeah, that's quite okay. I don't <laughs> want to be. I don't I need you to your, your time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. There, um, and have something. you read? I mean, I mean, the other day I remember that I went into my library and looked for it. Ha, have you read books by this science fiction author? But he 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 does science fiction and does all the things. Dan Simmons, have you, have you heard of him? No. He has a very famous book about uh, Hyperion and the rise of Hyperion and, and Endymion and whatever. But he has two, two, two it's, it's a whole novel in two books. It's like almost 2,000 pages. The first one, is, it's called Ilium, and the second one is Olympus. And it's a very strange book. It, it, it's it's uh, like some sort of alien race clone and, and sort of resurrect an historian, uh, 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 an American historian, and they put him on, on Mars where there are in the very, very, very far future, a race of aliens that are trying to re reenact the, the Heliod by Homer with droids. And this is the most amazing part. And there are whole sections of the book that is these aliens discussing if they're going to make it in the style of Shakespeare, Proust, or Nabokov, Ada, or Ardor. And intersect all through the novel are like fake chapters of Ada or Ardor with, wow. with there are like some sort of, of expansions of moments of this. It's this very, very strange book. Hmm. Really, 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 really strange. What was the name of it again? The first one is it's, it's titled Ilium and the, the author is Dan Simmons and the second Olympus. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll find it. I'll link to it in the show notes for this too, for anyone listening after I find it. There we go. Yeah, I haven't heard of that, but that sounds interesting. Um, yeah, it's a long book too, man. 731 pages. Why are you like <laughs> loving Thanks. these long ass books? Thanks a lot. Yeah. Which one? The Dan Siemens ones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're long. Told you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'll just wait for uh, David Lynch to do a bad movie about it. <laughs> Wait, which one? Other or those ones? Those ones. Ah, like <laughs> Dune. You say the, the, yeah. the, the, the new Dune. Yeah. Have, have you seen the, the 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 previews of the new Dune? I have. <laughs> it even has a it has a Pink Floyd song. So yeah. The last nothing, one of the Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, the must have because I think uh, when Hodorowski was going to make Dune, he was going to have Pink Floyd yeah. do one of the soundtracks mm -hmm. for the house, one of the houses. So yeah. Makes but me think it, 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 is going deep. It, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks well, he, I really like Blade Runner 2049. Mm. I think it was very, very good. And, and Arrival, Arrival, was, Arrival was, was a nice sci-fi film. Yeah. yeah, it was good. Except all the translator part. That was pretty lame, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that's another thing. I mean, we we're, we're, were talking a, a few minutes ago about, you know, uh, Nabokov hating science fiction. I think that what he hated was the idea of the future without him. Ah. Oh. Because he's always, you know, like, well, the, the, there's this famous quote by him that it's like, you know, the uh, future is the, the obsolete in reverse, which is an amazing idea, you know? And, and uh, he's always completely obsessed by the past all the time, all the time. I mean, all his books are Humbert Humbert is obsessed by his past. Pale Fire is completely obsessed. And he's obsessed by the books he, he, he has written in the past also. But yeah. he has, he, the, the, uh, you told me you read uh, Pnin again. Yeah. There's a moment in there that it's, for me, when, when I read it, it was like, I, I can't believe this. You know, one, one of the saddest parts of the book is when his son comes visiting him. Yeah. Remember the chapter? Yeah, yeah. And there's one part when they both have the same dream and when they wake up, they tell each other the dream. And the dream is the story of a king escaping from a kingdom going into exile. It's Pale Fire. Pale Fire. And in Pale Fire, Penin shows up. Because yeah, the, the, who's the assassin? Runs into essentially yeah, yeah. on campus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but, but, but that's easier to do. But, yeah, in, that's but in Penin, he's sort of, you know, predicting Pale Fire. He hasn't right. written it yet, you know? Yeah. It's very strange. It's so interesting. The way that his mind must have worked to put all this together is, is just incredible. Incredible. I mean, I think he has the, one, one of the greatest good strikes in history of literature. I mean, he's like, well, I have, I have the, three, the three volumes here from Library of America. And, you know, in the first one is the real life of Sebastian Knight, Ben Sinister, which is not perfect. Speak memory. The second is Lolita Nin and Pale Fire. I think that it's not better oh. book ever. Yeah. Plus the, plus the screenplay for Lolita. And the last one is Sad as Transparent Things and Look at the Harlequins. I mean, I, I, show me a writer that did something like that, you know, one after the other. It's pretty amazing. It's really yeah. amazing. I thought, there's so many lines I marked as I'm flipping through here that I just loved. Like, like and at the same like, time, you know, have you, have you seen this documentary that 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 they filmed at the hotel in Montreux where they lived? Uh uh It's very funny because well, they, they're already dead, but they have lots of material from the time they were living there, and they interview you know all the personnel of the hotel that was there when they were living there, and one of the barmen said. Bella wrote all the books. I'm completely sure he never wrote a word. Yeah. And the, the interviewer said, "What? <laughs> I mean, he was all the time playing tennis and chasing butterflies. It's impossible. He, she, she's the one who wrote all Nabokov's books. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of yeah. love it. Yeah, that'd be great. It'd be like the opposite of Elena Ferrante in a way. No." Yeah. The, the, and not to say, just to clarify that, I believe Elena Fronte is a female, but all the time that's always a persistent rumor of like people being like, oh, clearly a male must have written this. And in this case, it'd be funny that it's like- Have you, ever read, or have, have you read a book? Is, is she, he, it any good? Yeah, they're like completely, I read the, the I've read the first, um, the first book that was translated that was called Days of Abandonment is Fire. And that book is tight and vicious and wonderful. And then I read the um, the quartet, the Neapolitan quartet, and it's totally fine. It's like it's like a very accomplished sort of of kind of mid century long literary book. Like it's very much what it's supposed to be, and it does it extraordinarily well. It might just not be. It's not necessarily my favorite thing. Like I prefer something that's a little bit more experimental or weird or flawed in various ways. But it's like it's definitely like world class. There's okay. no doubt. Yeah. But it's like some sort know, of uh, the new book uh, I haven't. Seen. But it's sort of like Stefan Zweig, uh, that sort of writer. You, you know what I mean? No, not the same style or the same period, but uh, yeah, you know, Sandor Marai. Right. 
like it's very serious. Yeah, it's serious but approachable, and it's, yeah, it, it fits. It hit tech. She checks all the boxes that make it clear as to like why people really like her, and there's yeah. a lot of different reasons that people could like her. Um, like the insight into like female lives and into relationships, all that, like the language, the the sort of social construct. It's all there. It's all yeah. of those things, and it's all done in like the right way. Um, yeah. Almost to the point, like to me, it's almost like reading it was almost like, well, this is like. It's just everything else done really well. Like I don't feel like there's anything new here so much as it's just like those pieces put together right. No, you know, you know what what makes me so sort of sad, irritated about this sort of phenomenon is that I wonder how many of Elena Ferrante's fans ever heard of I don't know Giorgio Bassani, The Garden of Vinci Continues, or the Ferrara novel which is bas basically the same school of writing. Yeah. And they're, they're, never, they're never going to get there because, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can't expect people to read more than one book. <laughs> yeah. It's the, right? the same way that people, well, this is not exactly the same, of course, but I mean, people that sort of get excited about, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey, I mean, go read Wuthering Heights, man. It's exactly the same story. <laughs> Did you see that the, yeah. house, uh, yeah. the house that inspired Wuthering Heights is for sale? Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah, I think if we all pitch in a few bucks, we might be able to buy the garage. We have, we have to get it. We have to get it. <laughs> and then we can set it on fire. <laughs> also, the manuscript of, of the remembered part inside. <laughs> Use that as the kindling. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. I don't know if there's anything else I was going to say about the specifics of this particular plot, because it's all pretty much straightforward that they get together. They have a very sexy scene during a barn burning in which they they begin their, their love fair. There's like a... They, 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 define sexy in a Nabokovian context. I'm curious about it. Uh, <laughs> sex is described. Sex is described. <laughs> I think that I think that the part where um okay so I don't know if sexy is the right but when he talks when there's a section writing about watching her paint and like coming in behind her and like smelling her hair and her neck and all that like that's a very like flowery purpley like sexy type of writing or, or, yeah. or but I also think I like the part where it's like um no but and and, it, and it's really admirable in a way that you know he's like really being a teenager there. I mean, that sort of, you know, infatuation. I mean, and, I'm, I'm really never happen, going to get yeah. excited again about, you know, smelling the hair of no one. Yeah, or that little bump on the back of the neck. It's over. Out, <laughs> you, know, right? you know, it's over. But then it's um, paired with those wonderful concrete details. Like he kept five five coins in his pocket to hide his direction, direction basically. Like little, like little things like that that give it this youthful innocence and that burning passion yeah, yeah. while it's still wrong. It's just, what, what a masterful, yeah, it's just, it's a, I'm always in awe reading when he kind of gets very passionate time. with his prose. It's, it's. I'll give you, I'll give you a sexy reading to, to, to lay this, lay this <laughs> one down. Uh, we'll oh. So, so in the scene when they do have the burning barn and he goes to her room and they're kneeling and all that. And it's like, there is like, this is the part that you're talking about, Brian. And that's like that, what I was thinking of too. In order to explain tactfully, tactually, she belly danced against him, still more or less kneeling, her long hair getting in the way, one eye staring into his ear. The reciprocal positions had become rather muddled by then. Um, then he <laughs> pulls out his penis and she's like, oh, it's all skinned and raw. Does it hurt? Does it hurt horribly? Um, which I find to be incredibly funny because I just imagine this like 14 year old kid just like constant, like just like, ah, yeah. oh, this is yeah. painful at this point. And he's like, touch it quick, he implores. Van, poor Van. She went on in a narrow voice, the sweet girl used in speaking to cats, caterpillars, pupating puppies. Yes, I'm sure it's smart. Would it help if I touch? Are you sure? You bet, said Van. And then she starts touching it. It says, relief maps, said the primrose prig, the rivers of Africa. Her index traced the blue Nile down it into its jungle and traveled up again. Now what's this? The cap of the red belig is not half as plushy. In fact, positively chattering, I'm reminded of geranium or rather perlagonium bloom. God, we all are, said Van. Oh, I like this texture, Van. I like it. I really do. I do. Squeeze you, goose. Can't you see I'm dying? <laughs> 
And the, <laughs> our young botanist had not the faintest idea how to handle the thing properly. And Van, now an extremist, driving it roughly against the hem of her nightdress, could not help growing as he dissolved in a puddle of pleasure. That's fucking Fifty Shades of Grey level. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like the yeah. first sex scene in which a penis is being discussed as like a river Nile that's like kind of, I kind of there. I'm there for it. I'm like, yeah. It reminds yeah. me of when they kill, um, when he finally kills in uh, at the end of Lolita. And when you hear him read it out loud, it's very funny. Um, and the way the expressions he makes when he's being shot, he's going to fall down the stairs, and he's ooing and awing and pursing yeah. his lips and wincing. Like, this is supposed to be the giant climax we've been waiting for. And he, he tells it in this, like, funny, humorous. I, I feel it's like the same way here. Like we're getting the forbidden love and he's touch it already. Will you like, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, he was completely convinced about there's not, there's no that important big uh, classic book without humor. I mean, if you don't mm. laugh reading it, it's, it's, yeah. it's not working at all. I mean, the, the idea of the masterpiece, serious, solemn, uh, Bronsinius, Marmorian, masterpiece was was not for him at all you know there are there are parts in in, in speak memory that they play like this not not, not exactly sexual ones but with, with th that same sort of sensuality you know about you know everything being like embedded in some sort of permanent you know almost carnal pleasure you know it's all all the time is that in in, in Navacop, all, all the time you know yeah, it's like he gives more more passion to the cutting and eating of a a sandwich at, at, at under the tree versus like here you get more like bathos or you know. It's, yeah. but but, it's, but but it's what we were talking at the beginning. It's it's pure perfect happiness. He, mm -hmm. He's I mean his theme. If if you sort of of, of distillate to to his most uh, synthesized expression, is it's. it's perfect pure happiness all the time, even in the most sordid parts of Florida or, or whatever. Yeah, there's always an exuberance, especially all with time. language, with color, with sensory, it's it's. Yeah, and, 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 the, and, and the idea of the, of the characters feeling all the time like some sort of uh, being chosen once, you know, in the world mm -hmm. and, and being able, you know, to capture and feel and sense everything in a, in a way that the other, the others, can do because they don't feel that sort of uh, pretty sophisticated carnal energy, but at the same very brainy at the same time. You know, it's it's all the time like some sort of of thinking about itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, anything else you guys want to add? Do you have the finalists? No. Yeah, no, I do. You? I have the long list. Let's see. Well, let's end up. Is, is, is Navakov in there? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that would be awesome. I mean, I mean, but, well, I mean, it's it's all it's all what you expect. It's fine. We're not on there. We're never going to be on there. It's not okay. complaining about. But it's uh, but the the, Nav Navakov should have won the best the, the the National Book Award in translation and 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 the English one both. You know, yeah. <laughs> he translated himself. For sure, for sure. I mean, it's basically just all New Directions books, like usual, in your okay. robot. Well, uh, you want to hear them? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> but you, you want you you want you want you want us to hear it? No, I don't care. It doesn't really fit into here. Um, okay. But we do not have any books on here. Once again. Okay. I, I think when you edit it, just it's just all new directions, and then the music, the elevator music plays. Do, 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 do. Think, it's think about no, think about this. Bob Dylan, who in, in a in a eighties song of his in his most dark times wrote the verses. I've seen better times, but who has not? Which is one of my favorite quotes by Bob Dylan. He just mm -hmm. managed to get a number one this year with that song about JFK. It was the first one he got a number one being 79. And it's he, and he's Bob Dylan. So you know <laughs> and, if, and if you add up to that that you know Twin Peaks season three wasn't even nominated 
for one prize at the Emmys. That's right. I forgot about that. Not even one. Yep. Oh, I know. I know. I'm good. I mean, th th think, so think, about, think, think about this way. There's an anti-Terra, another, another United States where open leather books are, you know. Appreciated? <laughs> <laughs> much, much more than that. <laughs> oh, that would be a fucking nice place to visit. I, instead of <laughs> I mean, there was like five you, minutes. I, there were five yes, minutes where yes, I was yes, yes, yes. Come on, use your new superpowers. You can oh, yeah. you can bring it and you can bring that to, to, to our dimension. Absolutely. Come on, Thanos, do it. <laughs> it really was there's just like five minutes of like, oh my god, there's gonna be something part of, of 2020 that's not a complete piece of shit cesspool. And then it's like, <laughs> nope. Sorry, buddy. Good in a try. world, in a world of cinematic <laughs> realism, comes the publisher. This book needs to be difficult. <laughs> I, have I, I, I have some something very sad to tell you, Chad. We have just in September. We have October, November, and December yet to go <sighs> this year. November is going to be the real test. Well, think here we, we we are we are now acting. You know the remake of a film that hasn't finished. It's completely paradoxical what's happening here. I know. I mean, it's hell, hell again. Yep. It's going to get worse in 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 two weeks. This is going to be like, oh god. <sighs> okay, what's your favorite lines? Let's you can, you can save us, Chad. You can save us. Use oh, your superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> I have two I, favorite you, lines. You, you use your sound cannon. Use your sound cannon. <laughs> thing. I really think that I think it took me a week to get like clear again from but that. How, but, how, 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 but how does that work? I, I don't understand. Which is like some sort of sound wave? Yeah, it's like the loudest sounds you can imagine. And they're like sound like they're right next to you. Like it's like a pinpointed like thing that it can like I, like disperse a crowd because it can sound like there's like there's a like whatever going off like re, right near oh. you and so the well, one that that's that, 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 like a car no that, 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 that's what I told you it sounds like the Trump it of Jericho <laughs> <laughs> it really does it really yeah. does and the walls of your head came crumbling down and yeah. that was the end of it good I'm out yeah, the queen comes out of the sky. Wait, what, do you remember that beginning? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. Gravity's rainbow. Yep. Who was yeah. Pynchon, we, we have to remember this. Pynchon was a, an alumni, uh, uh, studied with Nabokov. Remember that? Uh, yeah. Now. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nabokov, of course, he, he didn't remember him at all. But Vera says, I remember him. He had a very nice handwriting. That's what Vera said. <laughs> <laughs> it's got something. Yeah. So you have, I have two favorite lines, Brian. Do you want to go first, though? Um, I think I know your favorite line, Rodrigo. First, I'll go. Well, my, my favorite one is the last one I ever read. Yep. The, the la, I mean, the last one in page one, two, two. The last one. It's ought, ought to begin dating every page of the manuscript. Should be kinder to my unknown dreamers. I uh, read, after you had said that, I was like, oh yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I mean, it's the perfect place to stop reading. Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. <laughs> Coming off the dream part, I thought, with, oh, I need yeah. to go back and see. Was that in the uh, in the epitaph or not? I can't remember. <laughs> well, no, it's not. No, it's in okay. the remember part. It's oh, okay. <laughs> it's in there. What do you have, Brian? Uh, I just, just the joy, the, the pleasure of reading the line, no, not for any anything else than just how beautiful it is on 99 um, on those relentlessly hot July afternoons. Otta liked to sit on a cool piano stool of ivory wood at a white oilcloth table in the sunny music room, her favorite botanical Atlas open before her and a copy out in color on creamy paper, some singular flower. She might choose for instance, an insect mimicking orchid, which she would proceed to enlarge with remarkable skill or else she combined one species with another unrecorded but possible, introducing odd little changes and twists that seemed almost morbid in so young a girl, so nakedly dressed. 
Uh, uh, I have another one. Yeah. I have another one I really like is when he's when it says, when we remember our former selves, there is always that little figure with his long shadow stopping like an uncertain belated visitor on a lighted threshold at the far end of an impeccably narrowing corridor. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> My two are a little bit lighter than both of those. One read is that, the, read that. <laughs> page 113. We were abominably depraved, weren't we? All bright kids are depraved. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. <laughs> and I think it was literally just a phrase. If people remembered the same, they would be not be different people. God, mm. that, where's that one? Let that is on page one twenty. Because they're, they're they're debating like what when things took place when, or when they happened. Yeah, the the, the fallibility. So like, the like this. One twenty. Yeah, right in the the middle of the first parenthetical. Sorry, no. If people remember the same, they okay. would not be different people. God, that's amazing. Implants. So, well, okay. Uh, I was trying to figure out where we go into next week, and then I got stopped. Um, um, okay. So for next week, uh, we are going to talk about chapters 20 through um, 29, which is pages 123 through 180. So we'll move, we'll move past where you were, Rodrigo, where you've been. I also noticed that on page 169, as I, as I say this, that there's a reference to Joyce and Pooh. Okay, send me a postcard. We'll send it. We'll send you a postcard. <laughs> Brian, anything you want to add? Where can people find you online? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I, I am on Twitter, but I just mentioned this thing and anything cool that we read, but it's at Brian Wood underscore. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm in Atlanta. So just come by and say hi. Everything's open out here. I mean, it's, very cool. but it's, 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 it's Will in Atlanta also. Yes. Yeah, so. we're, we're in it together. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> are, are you writing? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. It's it's. Uh, I'm getting close. It's getting close. It's interesting and close. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect ending. Okay. That's a perfect ending. Well, thank you guys. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, well, great. Thank you again, about. and good good luck with the good luck with the book. I hope the ending. It's it's. Let me know if it's a happy ending. That's all I want to know. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I think it is because uh, they're like no nagenarians already, and that. They seem to be very happy wherever yeah. they are. So, well, it's very good to see you, Rodrigo. You make me happy. You make me happy too. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. We're all very happy. Very never so call me in. That's part of 2020. Sick of sitting in the glazy, the blue eyes on the biscuit eye.